Hi everybody, good morning. Uh, I also feel I should start with a disclaimer, and that is that I was on the dance floor last night, so if I inadvertently injured anybody, <laughs> I can only apologise. Um, but anyway, uh, we should start with uh, introductions. So I'm Nick Lagan from Grunenthal, and this is my colleague Carolina, so you're going to get two for the price of one in this presentation, and obviously we're talking about AI. I'd say this is an example of kind of lazy AI. What we're going to talk about specifically is how we can make AI possibilities a bit more intelligent by enriching them with our own customer engagement data. So we're going to try not to be too techy. We're definitely going to try not to be too generic and too blah, 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 because it's day two. We want to try and delve as quick as we can into some concrete use cases that we can share with you. But just to set the scene before we do that, like every company, we've been on a digital transformation uh, over the last few years. Carolyn and I have been working together during that time period. It started for us in 2020, where we did all the plumbing, processes, all that good stuff. What with some brilliant vendors that are here today, uh, healthware guys, the Salesforce guys, the shower thinking guys, set everything up, and I think we're now at quite an exciting stage where we can start to realize the AI possibilities. So, um, just to give you some numbers, we're from a German company, so let's establish our credentials. Um, over the last few years, we uh, have run over 600 campaigns across many different markets, more simple campaigns, more complex campaigns. And when you look at just last year, we launched 244 campaigns, and actually for the first time, we were engaging more customers digitally than through traditional channels. So that was a really important milestone for us because it really signaled to our senior management that we'd completely revolutionized how we commercialize our products. So um, nice numbers, and actually this year we've already run over 100 campaigns. So our campaigns are going exponential in terms of numbers and getting quite interesting in terms of the complexity of it. By no means is everything perfect. We've had loads of failures as well. Um, we do, though, run uh, our campaigns quite centrally. This is our suite of platforms. You will have something similar, so I don't want to make it a beauty contest. But um, what I would highlight is our customer data platform, because I think that really helps us to make the AI possibilities uh, intelligent, because we're a big believer, I'm a big believer, that to really drive personalization, to really improve customer experience, you need that unification of customer data. That's what helps inform everything. And as we think about the activations we can do, the different types of campaigns that we can do, as we move towards always on campaigns, triggered campaigns, next best actions, etc. within all of that, we're gonna share some of it, there's loads of AI interesting things that we can benefit from. But it's not that intelligent if we don't base everything first off our customer data that we gather. So, um, that's just a bit of a scene setter. We want to get straight into the use cases, though. A uh, bit old school this. Uh, we've got loads of uh, use cases. Uh, so we thought we would uh, spin the wheel to see which one. Oh, that was a bit quick. Spin the... <laughs> Let me try that again. What, what ages are in this animation? Uh, it's all, it's all, it is already decided. There you go. I blew that. Anyway, well, always on campaigns. Years, one Carol. Years. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. So let's go to the fans uh, theme. Here's the wheel, right? Lovely. <laughs> Come on, Nick. So what we are going to uh, start is showing what is, we are doing with, all, well, with our always on campaign. What does it mean, always on campaign? Especially if we are focused on increase the user experience in real time. But it's not also in real time. We are focused on data driven. Uh, what does it mean? So we have different uh, categories to activate this always on uh, campaign. We're having all this ecosystem and platform integrated, so we are able to understand what are uh, the customer are doing in any act activation and also any interaction. So with that, we're able to create personalized content uh, after any interaction. So let's see uh, the, this first use case. The idea of this use case is to improve the field force promotion. So having this uh, opportunity of this integration, we're able to understand what was in the visit 
face to face or could be also a digital uh, visit, then Data Cloud support us and create this audience with a new segmentation. So we are, we are able to create a, and start this journey. So we are identified it, what was uh, the, the meeting in the first face to face or digital promotional, then Data Cloud create this new segmentation. After that, we are able to uh, understand and send a survey to see if the uh, visit was good or not. And then we create another segmentation with Data Cloud. But you will ask, what is the AI here? Yes, the AI here is that we are now starting work with the surveys. Uh, we are analyzing all the feedback and also the sentiment analysis that then Nick will show a, uh, later another use case. Let's jump to another use case. We're, as all pharma companies, uh, we're really focused on customer experience. So in this case, Data Cloud support us to create this new segmentation. So if we identify a feedback, or negative feedback, or low score in, in our uh, campaigns, or in any uh, interaction, we're able to react immediately so we can handle the, uh, the, the topic, with the, uh, in this case, with the customer. So in this case, Data Cloud support us and they identify this low score and low feedback or negative feedback. We create a new segmentation in Data Cloud where the, this new journey uh, starts. And then we can create a next step action or suggestion or any other activation depending on the feedback. Because if it's a really negative feedback, we need to handle it in a, in a, in a, in a different approach versus if we are just doing a follow up or also. Uh, now we are starting to ask the content, if their content are good or not in, in our web page. So that is the ability to have all this ecosystem integrated. Let's jump to another use case. So, web page. We know the web page is a, a nice strategy to maintain our retention. So in this case, we are trying to focus and maintain a personalized communication with our, our HCP. So, Every time that one HCP is registered in, uh, in the web page, Data Cloud create a new segmentation, and with AI, we're able to create an email, a thank you email, and also keep the communication in a personalized way. But that is not all, because also, we, if, we, if the Data Cloud identify the user, we're able to see, okay, we are identifying these HTTPs. We are having all these platforms connected. We have Viva. We have. We are understand also the, the, the affinities. Also, we know that he's uh, uh, open all the emails, or uh, he doesn't like maybe all the webinar. So we can improve that communication and create personalized communication after that uh, information. And you will ask, well, where where here is the AI in this always on campaign? We are using AI to create, a, to boost the open rates. So we are identifying when, in the correct time, we need to send the, uh, the uh, of, sorry, to deliver the, the email. And then also we are cre starting to create subject with AI. Uh, if you saw the, the presentation for Tower Thinking, we are working uh, together to create and improve this uh, dynamic content. But this is not all. Of course, we have different and many other use cases of always on, but let's see another category that we are going to share today. Well, the typical next bet action. What does it mean? This next bet action is a different way. We are doing next bet action, but we are calling like a next bet action or next bet engage 2.0. What does it mean? So this is a, the typical uh, we miss you campaign, very focused on the retention pillar. What is the difference of uh, this campaign? We are using platforms like Marketing Cloud, Einstein, and personalization to understand the customer's need. So in the first phase, <laughs> I will try to so we, personalization try to track all the information that we are doing with the, uh, with the HCPs. So we are understanding what uh, uh, content they like, what uh, the preference of information, if they prefer more webinar or more videos or more articles, or every, every insight we're getting and we are creating this personalized. We're then after, uh, after the, we are understanding or tracking this information, what we are going to do in this retention campaign is we are identifying 
all the HTTPs that hasn't returned to our web page. So we know that it's super hard to retain uh, people. So this is not also a we, we miss you, a simple we miss you campaign, because also we are understanding what are the, the categories, what are the affinities uh, with the HTTPs, so we can create a personalized content uh, after that. So we can identify each different user, and each different user can deliver an uh, deliver any uh, content. So after this information, we create a, an, an extra link to keep the follow-up uh, in, in the personalization campaign, identify that instant recipe, in this case, create this dynamic content using this personalized uh, information. So this is a real use case where we uh, identify more than 200 physicians that didn't register. So we say, okay, we need to create and we need to get them back. Also, after that, we identify that those users only visit the home. So we have a huge opportunity because we know in this industry that, that it's super hard to create new content. So the idea is to boost the same content that it doesn't uh, been used using this information and all, uh, all the AI tools. But let's jump to another use case. This is a pilot that we are doing right now uh, in, with Iberia, with a, one of the web that is amazing. Uh, it's an unbranded web page that has a lot of traffic and also is, has an amazing customer experience. So what we are doing, doing this is try to improve the, cost, the customer experience and the strategy. So we are going to, the same, uh, very similar approach to the previous use case, we are tracking and we are identifying how we, the, uh, the user behavior in this case. Then we create and we complement with instant recommendation, everything with AI. So it's all uh, inside the, the platform. So we can recommend personalized uh, uh, campaign, boosting and engaging all the physicians. Then we create another segmentation when we are going to create this dynamic content to keep a, a, a dynamic content and create this segmentation. That, but that, this is not all, because you say, well, what, what is the chat GPT uh, part? So we are using, in, in, in our case, uh, in pharma, we use it to be based on the umbrella of uh, Azure. So we, we are sharing this information. So the goal of this campaign was, let's focus on the unbranded content, but move very smooth, uh, smoothly boost uh, to branded content. So ChatGPT will identify all the information that we are getting with personalization and Einstein, uh, Einstein engagement. And then ChatGPT will recommend the perfect product to keep the communication with the HCPs. This is not all also, because we can continue the communication with the digital approach, with the next best uh, engage, or also we can identify a call to action with our uh, sales rep or MSLs, with the focus to keep in improving the personalization and engagement. So, but this is not all. We, are, we also are working another uh, use case that Nick will share. Cool, thanks, Carol. So, uh, see if I can do this correctly this time. Um, we, uh, last category, last chance to spin the wheel, um, is talking about customer journeys. So, how can we enhance customer journeys or customer campaigns using AI? So, this is the last uh, use case that we want to share. So, um, thinking about a typical customer event, a webinar, we break it down into two stages, the pre-webinar stage and the post-webinar stage. So in terms of driving registrations for the webinar, there's a few different ways we can do it. First way we look to do it is through ensuring that, through profiling of our customers, when certain customers, certain specialities, visit our websites and, and engage in certain content, at that stage, we provide a pop-up to them and an opportunity to register for the webinar. So we're not spamming them, we're trying to get the right time where they're gonna be more receptive to attending the webinar, that's one way. The other way is obviously through uh, emails. We try and give our key account managers the opportunity to drive uh, invitations to start with, but we give them a window of opportunity. And after that window of opportunity, using AI, we create audiences, 
from our target list of those customers that haven't yet registered and we dynamically then trigger an email to send to them to offer them the opportunity to also attend the webinar. And lastly, when we have registrations, we use SMS to send reminders, which includes two hours pre-webinar event, an opportunity to view that webinar also through a mobile device. So within all of this, there's many aspects of how we leverage AI, including when we send the emails, thinking about saturation levels of our customers, et cetera. But I don't think that's the interesting part. I think the most interesting part is what happens post-webinar event. Obviously here we've got those customers that attended and those customers that registered but did not attend for whatever reason. And here we want to gather feedback from them, which obviously every company does. I think what is a little bit different is that we're starting to also ask open text questions, which is pretty cool because we all know within pharma that is a compliance headache and we just do not do that. But we think AI can help us here because by putting in prompts for keywords, key phrases, anything that is suggestive of an adverse event, we can trigger emails to our compliance officers to take the necessary action. So that then gives us license to try and get a, a deeper business insight. And for that, again, using AI, we can apply sentiment analysis. So we can build in prompts so that if there's anything, for instance, that's suggestive of the fact that they had a really bad experience at the webinar, or they didn't enjoy it, that we can apply a low sentiment score to that, trigger an next best action. And we're also looking to feed into a Viva CRM system, or at the moment directly to the key account managers, the exact text so that they're informed and, and then can follow up smartly. Obviously, if they really enjoyed it, um, and they got a lot from the webinar, that's important information to also push back in terms of that insight. So, um, as I said at the beginning, um, we're at quite a, we think, quite an interesting stage in terms of our transformation where we can start to pilot all of this cool stuff. And, you know, I think technology such as Salesforce and brilliant partners such as Shower Thinking have been instrumental in uh, making that a reality for us. So, um, Let's pause there, and uh, I think we've got a few minutes for <laughs> questions. <clears throat> so, do we have any time for questions, or? <laughs> hey, um, awesome work, by the way. Really impressive. One of the most best practical examples I've seen of automations in these conferences, so yeah, hats off. Um, I, I wanted to ask um, if you've applied this or piloted these workflows into specific brand or marketing teams, uh, and also um, how receptive have you know, people like brand managers or marketing managers been to effectively setting up this strategy? Because I assume you know, if you're planning a campaign, you're gonna have to know what's possible be able to plan in your own workflow that's relevant to your brand uh, and, and, and sort of take in all this knowledge. So, um, yeah, how's, how's that kind of uh, that change management process been and have people been receptive? Do you want me to start? And then you compliment. Uh, yeah, great question. I think, again, I think it's, it's really encouraging because we're starting to get from brand teams lots of questions. Like, could we do this? What else could we do? You know, could we track... Um, in terms of uh, the adoption ladder. You know, we've got this customer and rich data, brilliant. Can we tr track exactly where they are in terms of the adoption stages? We also, you know, with some of the tech possibilities that are coming up soon, we can generate content, which is you know, AI content, but it's enriched by our own customer data, so <laughs> therefore you know, should fit the, the persona of different customers. I think we believe we can start to inject in unstructured data quite soon to the customer data platform. So there's loads of possibilities, and I think the way colleagues have embraced it has been super positive. Hmm. I think now, and also they are seeing the benefit. Now, if we are watching or sharing this uh, campaign, they see that the benefit, uh, the difference when we are creating personalized campaign versus a, a normal campaign. So based on that, they are starting to think in data and with that, we are three years and the next campaign. So 
I think we're still working. Of course, there is some cluster uh, with difference, but I think they are seeing or they're watching the, the benefits of that. Cool. We get time for one more quick one, Danny, or? Yeah? <laughs> if not that easy, we're going to be like, okay. stress levels here with the time. <laughs> Um, yeah, so two slightly linked questions. One, um, what measurable results have you seen from this? And are there any use cases in particular that you've seen more successful than others? Do you want to? I didn't okay. hear that. Uh... So the, I think the question was, what results have we seen so far? And any use cases you think are particularly relevant or? Good? Yeah, spot on. I, I've got to be honest, but we're piloting all of this stuff. So, I mean, in terms of business benefit, we can't claim that just yet. Mm. But I think what is obvious is the move towards always on campaigns. Um, that's cool. And I think some of the use cases we try to share, um, which Carol shared the one about moving customers from unbranded content on web pages through prompts and boosting certain content to branded content is super, is super cool. And you know, just thinking about the possibilities to drive registrations for key events and what have you is, is also you know, a nice way to do it. Hmm. Cool. I think we're out of time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.